Hey everyone, Merrick's here bringing you another video. This one is going to be on Seth Rollins, Embrace the Vision. Uh, so we have a new Seth Rollins in the game. He is a modern era striker. Uh, he has two links, the SmackDown link, any color move, starts with one more move point, and modern era gems do 5% more damage. He has two gears. Uh, it doesn't matter which order you get him in, the first gear will make all of your moves start with three more move points. The second gear is going to add 150% more move damage to all moves. Uh, very powerful gears. Um, he is a coach. He's a leech gem coach. We've been calling for this for a long time. And we have a leech gem coach. Now, leech gems do 25% more damage. That doesn't uh, affect the heal. I tried it out on edge, and the leech gem heals didn't get any bigger. Uh, the gem damage was bigger, though, uh, but it didn't affect the heals. At 9k, you're going to get 25% more, and moves that create leech gems will create one more. Um, so I have three move sets for you guys. A 3-star, um, a 5-star, and a 4-star. I do have the gear, and I've heard a lot of talk about this Seth. Um, I will say, in my opinion, with both gears... He would be the first striker I would take into feud other than Hall of Fame Hogan, um, who is very rare. So if you get both gears, uh, you're going to want to take him up. I don't know how you're going to get the gears yet. I don't know if they're going to be in feud milestones, if they'll come with pulling him, if they'll be in bags or what. Uh, but with both gears, he is a complete monster. My favorite build set by far is the last one I'm going to run. I can get four moves off on turn one. You'll want to stick around for that. I do have a strap for him. Uh, I'm not going to change the metals during the preview, so he's going to be set up this way. The strap is set up for the final uh, build set, mostly. Uh, I don't have the move damage metal maxed. It is a takedown, so it's at 99%. I have a four set takedown, and you can see that breaks down. I have 137% uh, move damage buff with what I got going right here. Only about 30% gem damage, so we're actually at a gem damage disadvantage against the strapped opponents by about 20%. Um, because I prefer the move damage for him, I went that route. Uh, not going to have a plate on him for the preview. Um, but this should give you a really good idea of what he would look like uh, strapped up. So let's get uh, get out here and take a look at these move sets. Again, this one is available at 3-star. It's got his finisher, the Stomp, 10 MP black, deal 140,000 damage and destroy 4 random blue gems and pin the opponent. Sling Blade, love the animation on this one by the way, uh, 4 MP blue, deal 42,000 damage and choose a 2x2 two two area to swap into black gems. And the Dodging Enziguri, 4 MP uh, blue move, deal 51k damage and gain 4 black MP. Uh, because we have the gear, we do not need any MP trainers. So we're going to go double move damage with Dango, blue and black moves, deal more damage. And um, Striker Ambrose, black moves that deal damage, deal 45% more. Um, if you had um, Acrobat Asuka, she makes black finishers hit for 150% more damage. Uh, that would be pretty wild. Uh, the finisher would get really, really strong. Um, I'm just throwing off on for blue gems do 15% more damage. It's going to be almost a very little difference for the preview as far as that goes. And I'm going to use Hall of Fame Ted. He's not the most rare of the Hall of Fame cards, but he's still kind of rare. He adds 20% more black gem damage. Uh, that basically um, that basically makes up for what I'm uh, missing on the, on the strap uh, with those last three. Um, not quite, but adds it a little bit. So um, let's get out here and, and take a look. I actually like this card a ton. Like I said, if I had gears, I would build them up right away. We're going to go against Hall of Fame Eddie, Eddie on the road, 5-star silver maxed, and it wouldn't be a preview if I didn't crash my blue stacks. So we're going to crash my blue stacks. Um, I would run him double takedown. That is what I have on him. Um, and cheap shot or head games for that finisher. Uh, by the time you get the gear on, I think you guys are going to be surprised at how high his gem damage is. And in particular, the last build set is kind of nutty. Oh, we do not want to be on Albuquerque. Took a left turn at Albuquerque there. 
Okay, hell mode round two, first match. Striker required. Luckily, we have a striker. We have lots of them. Uh, incidentally, uh, while you have the trial, if you can get to this node, you should. You could clear it with the trial striker, Seth. Um, you can you get both gears in the trial as well from the normal and hard mode of this tour. So both the blues are charged right away. Um, this one will fill the black up. And we're just going to hit the next one for more damage. You can see that did 157k by the time we have the gear on. The sling blade is going to too. And I love the animation on the sling blade. Uh, I'll make a three match of black. Very unlikely we'll cascade. Um, so might as well take a little extra, little extra gem damage for fun. I say that and we almost cascaded. And now we're going to hit the finisher. So we're doing 637,000 damage on the finisher. Uh, if we had, if you had a tier five medal and um, Asuka, you'd be well over 800,000. So 660k on that finisher. And even with a cascade, Eddie can't kick out. So, and that's not my favorite moveset. So like I said, with gear, uh, I think he will be extremely fast and very, very good in feud. Um, you could also run this moveset in Showdown. Uh, it's only 4 MP. Uh, you're getting plus 3 from the gear. You could put uh, Lawler in there and take off uh, Dango, for example. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, next moveset is 5 star. This is actually my least favorite moveset. It is gem damage based, so this one you'd want to run double fury. It is pretty simplistic though, so that part is nice and it does recycle. Um, I'm not, like I said, going to change my strap, so it won't be set up double fury, but you would want to run this one for sure double fury. So we are going to bring in the um, turnbuckle power bomb. And the straight sidekick. And then the five star move is the diving blockbuster. Okay. So the turnbuckle power bomb, 9 MP red, deal 76k damage, and make all black gems into multiply gems of strength 4. Straight sidekick, another 9 MP red move, deal 71k damage and choose 5 black gems to destroy. And the diving blockbuster, 9 MP black, deal 74k damage and swap a 3x3 three three, uh, area into red gems. It is random. Uh, Entourage, we're going to run with Sting from uh, red MP, so it'll be ready turn 1. It would be ready turn 1 in feud as well uh, with the gear. And like I said, this is my least favorite move set. And we're going to put Matt Hardy on there to make those multiply gems times six. And modifier is what we want. Uh, Typhoon for more red gem damage. Obviously, if you had Boogeyman, that would be the, the coach you would want to use since he's black damage. Um, at this level, I did try um, Dude Love or Volkov at 35%. They were slightly less damaged than Matt Hardy. Like, I want to say about 4k. Um, that could change, potentially, maybe. Um, if you had him super strapped, I don't know. I just know at this level, when I tested him, um, Matt Hardy was slightly better than Dude Love. But not by much. It was like 4k a gem. 54k versus 57k, um, I believe. And Typhoon for more red damage on that 3x3, three three, red uh, gem damage. And we'll just leave Ted in on there. Again, um, cheap shot on this one. Yeah, I, you guys know I like cheap shot at this point. Um, or two words for you would be really good on when that red uh, random area is going out. It recycles uh, just fine, so no need for any of the, the color gem uh, plates. So we're dealing almost 200k on each of the reds. We're going to turn all black gems into multiply gems of strength 6. 
And then we're going to choose five to destroy. Um, potentially, you could also use a black destroy coach in, instead of matte and destroy more. But five is a good chunk of gems. I don't think you're often going to see a lot more than five. So I think matte is probably the way to go. Obviously, that'll load the finisher. And the finisher will load the reds. So we did a 500k there. Not bad. This is random. So we might hit the multiply gems. We might not cascade. We may get the finisher. It's hard to say. Okay. So nothing wrong with that. Um, we'll be looking at a turn two win. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to run, nothing crazy, uh, works really well with gear. And obviously I don't have any of the Multiply Gem trainers or coaches, you know, the Mem Rocks, the Z Takers, um, that kind of stuff. There's another one recently that I can't think of right off the top of my head that was pretty good too. Maybe Snoop? Maybe Acro Snoop? So another easy win with Seth. Um, and let's see my favorite move set. This is my favorite by far. I can get four moves off with this. Um, it would be even easier to get four moves off with this in Feud. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to mess with four moves, you cannot use Bray. And um, you can use um, another move damage trainer like Dean and Asuka. In fact, if I had Asuka, that would be the play here is just run Asuka and Dean with this build. Um, and in Feud, you wouldn't need um, Elias either. Um, I only have, I have two, plus two MP and plus one on a match for two or perks. Um, so let's bring that finisher back in, which we've seen already. And the Sling Blade back in, which we've also seen. And the one we haven't seen is the four-star move, the Falcon Arrow. That's a nine MP black. Deal 77k damage and increase your blue gem damage by 144% for two turns. Uh, it's really not that big a deal. We're only destroying four blues. But the move damage is what we're looking at here. It adds a bunch more move damage. Um, a lot of people like the black MP up one. I much prefer the sling blade, and you'll see why here. Again, uh, double takedown on this one. Let's get the trainers changed out. So going with Bray, we can charge the Falcon Arrow twice on turn one. Uh, so we're going to get to hit that move twice, which is a decent chunk of damage, right around 370k I think, 70K, um, with this move set, the way it is. There is Bray on there for me testing Edge for the Leech Gems. And again, if I had Asuka, uh, the play would be Asuka and Dean. Um, the, the finisher would be just ridiculous uh, with this setup. I'm going to put Elias on there. Uh, also, Elias is in the Gold League 18 loot. So if you've been missing um, Elias for the League 18 gold loot, um, looks like you'd have a good shot to get him uh, now. Acro Macho's in there, too, who I'm missing, so that eh, is making me think about doing it, because he's a unicorn for me. Anyway, unrelated. Uh, let's get out here and check this moveset out. Really like this moveset. Cheap shot and head games for this one, too. Um, you're doing a ton of moves, so very likely those would be going off for you. Okay, so our finisher's dealing 600k damage. Um, the Falcon Arrow's dealing 335k damage, and the Sling Blade's dealing 116k damage. So, we're gonna hit the Falcon Arrow, and then we're gonna try to fill it up. And because we have Elias, and plus one on a match, uh, you could drop Elias, and this would charge in Feud 2. And you could put, say, Gooker on there if you had Gooker. Uh, we may Cascade... Uh, but let's see how it goes. We did. 
And now you can see it's reloaded again. So that's an extra 335,000 damage. Um, and Eddie started at what? Close to 2 million health? And here comes the finisher. Love the animation on the stomp, too. And the falcon arrow, actually. 650k on the finisher after taking off almost all of his health. Um, I think he's, what, 1.8, 1.7? Anyway, that's 1.4 million damage without a tier 5 medal, without a max tier 4 medal, um, and without Asuka. So you could do the math on where that ends up. It's a lot. So uh, anyone that doesn't think he's a top tier striker uh, with the gears, in my opinion, is crazy. He's a feud monster and uh, will be a feud monster. Now, uh, since all of that went so well, um, I'm going to take the trial card out and we're going to use him. Uh, and I'm going to take the strap off my Seth and put the strap on the trial card because it'll go away when the uh, trial card goes away. So I'm going to remove this right now. Eight K strap parts. Bye bye. And I'm going to put it on the trial Seth and we're going to take the trial Seth out against a five star bronze with no gear. I have deliberately not equipped any gear or opened the bags for my trial Seth. So I could show everyone, if you get Seth without gear, is he still viable? Is he still good? I am still going to use my favorite build. The same one, um, the same one, except instead of Bray, I'm going to be using, you can use Lawler. I'm going to have AJ in there. He's only 2 MP. Uh, Lawler, obviously, is more. It doesn't matter. You don't need AJ. And um, I'm going to go to the exact same setup other than that. Um and we'll take it out him out against a fellow um five star bronze that's strapped going to run him the same way except without the gear I won't be able to get two t um two moves turn one that's the only difference uh two of the falcon arrows I'll just be able to get one what am I doing we're here So many trainers to scroll through now. It'd be nice to have a filter for coaches, uh, for uh, the MP coaches. That would be helpful. I use them fairly often. There we go. There's Elias. And we'll get Ted on there. And you guys can see what he looks like without gear. I should probably put the strap on him as well. So here you go. This is going to be ungeared, Seth. Um, is he still viable? Is he still good? Is he still, uh, in my opinion, a top-tier striker? Well, let's find out. I haven't tried him without a strap or with a strap so um you know i don't know i'm pretty positive he will be and i think people are underrating him okay um we'll go royal rumble we'll go normal round four and vader no just kidding i'm not gonna fight vader Showboats don't kick out very well. We'll just fight AJ here. All right. Here we go. Same setup, uh, but no gear. Other than instead of Bray, I tossed AJ on there. Or not AJ. Yeah, AJ um, for the blue. So the blue starts loaded turn one. You could use Lawler as well. So no gear. Uh, we need to load six. Um, so... A five match will do it. A three match, two sets of threes will do it. We have two sets of three, or we have a five. I prefer two sets of three, uh, most likely. Let's see how it looks. I don't like that those reds are there. Um, 
looks relatively safe other than that. Okay, so this is turn one. Against equal level with no gear. Five star bronze versus five star bronze. And I don't have the optimal setup. Um, my metal isn't maxed. I don't have a tier five. And I don't have Asuka. Completely wiped his health turn one with no gear. So for anyone who thinks he is not a top tier card, I highly disagree. If I got him even without gear, I would level him up and he would be on my feud roster. Especially with a 4 MP charge move. Um, so there you guys have it. My take on Striker Seth. Is he a top tier acro or striker? Absolutely. Um, he will feud faster than Zombie Triple H. Not better. Like, Zombie Triple H is stronger, so I'm not saying he's stronger, but faster. And a lot of times I prefer faster for feud. Um, so there you go. Even without gear, uh, he'll be great. If you have Asuka, even better. You're going to look way better. A tier 5 metal, way better. A maxed tier 4, better. Um, great card. I actually really like him, and I hope I get him. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Love to hear what you think in the comments. Uh, especially curious about what you guys think of what he did without his gear, the total damage there. Um, other than that, uh, thanks for watching, and good luck out there, guys.